Good morning, First Church. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so very much for uh, um, the invitation to be here. And um, I would like to share it with you. I love this church. I love this family. And even more importantly, I love my brother and my friend, Dr. Timothy C. Aarons and Susan. I, I, I really want to challenge you to uh, be extremely good to him because he's certainly a wonderful gift to this city. Um, to our state and to this nation, uh, being a Yale graduate and being at the forefront of uh, the social injustice that continues to brew in our community. Um, he is always at the forefront of my life and issues that are germane to all of us. And, and uh, we have a long history. Uh, I was sharing earlier today that I was with him when uh, he renewed the wedding vows of his parents. I think it was 50 or 60 years. And um, there's been times when I've been with him on Easter, Mother's Day, Christmas. Um, that's how much we love each other. He's family to me. And I just wanted to share with you my love for him and the love for this uh, family. Also, I want to share a story uh, that uh, when we were in Florida, and uh, I told him I'll have to answer to God for this because I sort of embellished it um, and, and and added a little something to it. I was a little hyperbole, and I told him before I get in, I will have that conversation with God. But we were uh, in South Beach, and we were going by a place, and it was like some activity was going on. We didn't expect to see people in there we were just about, and they had their clothes off and everything. And, and as we walked by, somebody called my name. I said to Tim, I said, doesn't it seem like we're in the bowels of hell? <laughs> and he said, it sure does. And right when I said, doesn't it seem like we're in hell, somebody called my name. <laughs> I said, Tim, when I get back to New Faith, I'm going to tell the story, but I'm just going to change it and say they call your name. <laughs> so I will have to answer for that. Um, <laughs> Because I couldn't go back and, and, and just give the entire truth uh, to my congregation about our little episode in uh, Florida and South Beach. So uh, I just want you to know that he is certainly a great gift. I love him. He's my brother. He loved my father. When dad didn't want to see anybody else, he said, where is my boy? Where is my son? And he wouldn't go out with anyone else except for he and Susan. And they took him uh, to the places that he loved most to eat. And I just want to share with you, he is such a wonderful gift um, to all of us. And he uh, serves in my life of colossal proportion. And uh, can you uh, join in with me to celebrate Dr. Timothy C. Aarons? Don't forget about my sister Susan. Now, as we reflect upon the word of the Lord, I would like to meditate, contemplate, recapitulate what has already been uh, uh, explained in our text. So if you will maintain, sustain, contain and retain what was explained from the readings, um, I would just like to catapult as my subject today learning, leading, and living with your legacy in mind. As we walk among this paradoxical galaxy that we call life, I've always said that we live in a time when we don't know really what time it is. It is a time that changes with time all the time, but yet we don't have enough time to observe what time it is. Time is something most of us don't have enough of. In time, we've experienced yesterday from yesteryear. But it's about time that we spend our time with the author of time because time and time again, we waste our time looking back in time, being frustrated with the time, wondering what time it is. In this text, it is a time where David now is looking from the lens of his final hours. 
It is the time that we dread most that after we've lived the worst that typically will culminate in all of our life if we have some kind of celebratory uh, recognition of our life at all. The words that we have to embrace but we don't want to hear is earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. So in this text, David is looking at his life. And as he reflects, he, now he is talking to his son Solomon and he's sharing with him what he needs to do to be able to carry on the good work that God had entrusted to David. Each one of us have a majestic Pentecostal seal of God in our life. All of us were called with a purpose. We were called from something for something to do something. And hopefully at the end of our time that someone will be, be able to remember our names or remember us as a hero or a shero and not simply a zero. I was looking at this text. I was eavesdropping on the fact that David had walked with God and he was a person who had a heart that was directed toward God. Not only did David go on what he could see, but he also had to look at the lens through time of what he could not see. All of us in here, if we walk with God, we have to learn that in order to be able to live right, we have to learn right. In order to be right, you have to see right. And as a prophet, we need to have a sight on the north side, on the south side, on the east side, on the west side, so that we can know what is coming on the Lord's side. David had all of these sites. As a matter of fact, all prophets should be able to have a view of God from each wind in the universe. First of all, some of us who have a close relationship with God should have foresight, which means that you can see what's coming before it ever arrives then others of us should have insight. Not only do you know it's coming, but you can almost predict when it's coming. And not only should you have insight and foresight, but you need to also have oversight and look back and say, I didn't see that that was coming. Then we all need hindsight. Should have known it was coming, but... I didn't quite catch that. So David now is looking and he's framing what his life and the summation of everything that he has done, what he wants his son to carry on as he's on his way going to the grave. I shared earlier today is nothing worse then when people sit here and are in a state of do-nothingness, there was a question that was asked by a young boy, which is worse, ignorance or apathy? And his response was, I, 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 I don't know and I don't care. And there are many of us, not in this church, but in this city somewhere, who have a mindset that no matter what goes on, I simply don't care whether it's poverty on the street, whether it's somebody being treated wrong, it doesn't matter to me. And even in this city right here, depending upon what zip code you live in, it all equates to what kind of services you will receive. Depending upon your zip code, it all depends on whether you're going to have police officers to come and serve and protect 
or over police your community. So David now is looking at his life and he's thinking about those things that are the most meaningful to him. Perhaps I'm speaking to somebody today that point number one, you need to understand that we all need to have somebody that we can learn something from. Because now David is at a point where he understands that learning is pivotal and critical. If Solomon is going to carry on the bloodstained banner of God and to be able to mobilize his actions to do the things that are the most meaningful to God. So here he is now looking and prognosticating what may be the life of Solomon. Think about it, if you will. We all have to learn from our past. We have to not only just go through some things, but also through our experiential encounter, think about what we should have learned or what we did learn from going through that. And I believe that David learned a lesson very early on from being a shepherd boy when God had dispatched Samuel to go by his father's Jesse's home in Bethlehem and to tell him that I'm searching for a king and God said there's a king in this house. You all remember the story, it's nothing worse than when you have been overlooked by your own family. Here is David tending to the sheep. Seven other sons had been interviewed. The Lord spoke to Samuel, said, no, it's not one of them. But this king is still in this house. The, the king that's going to be the second king of Israel is in this residence and he is here. Ask him, is there somebody else? Well, I've got news for somebody. S sometimes we have to live beyond the expectations or the limitations of what others think about you and I. Because David was a shepherd boy and he was overlooked. But when he came to Samuel, Samuel said, this is the next king of Israel. Perhaps God could see that someone who had the care and the concern and the compassion to tend for sheep would have the same love to be able to share for God's people. And I'm wondering today how many of us are learning from our past and our future and shaping what we want to be our legacy that when we leave here, someone will have some clue of what we stood for, some clue of what we believe. I, 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 I pray that there are some other Tim Aarons here today that some have learned what it's like to put your life on the line, to fight day in and day out for somebody else's equality because you have a calling from God to do the work of God. Well, here is David, perhaps the one who had been marginalized, minimized, even ostracized by those who knew him. But I'm wondering today, is there anybody in here that knows that when others overlook you, God doesn't look 
at what is on the exterior. Some of us got our hair together today. We came in and we put on some mascara. We put something on our hair. We came in with our Sunday best or our jeans and khakis. But the reality is God knows what's on the inside. He has a purpose for every person in this context. To live your life in such a way that you learn. And what you learn, you move in transition to be able to go out and tell somebody, God woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. Look at David, if you will. Charles Darwin said, we are products of our environment. But yet many of us are called to live beyond the status of what others have labeled us to be. God has put us in a position to learn, not only to learn but to get up from the pew and to start leading somebody so that when you leave here, they will know what your life was like and live out the values of what God instilled in you. Here is the text today of a man who had just as many successes as failures. But because his heart remained repentant, his heart remained close to God, he still was able to say that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What I like about God, falling and failing are not synonymous. When we fall down, we can get back up. Because the Lord woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Gave me another chance to be able to look out and to see if I could help somebody. Perhaps it is somebody that everybody else thinks is a nobody. But he asked me to lead somebody. David understood it well when he said, I've learned the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, it seems not only did David learn from God, but he also learned that God had a mission for him to lead somebody. And he's given instructions now to Solomon that I'm not going to always be with you. But one thing that will get you through life's most ominous days, when you're dealing with your messed up Mondays, your toe up Tuesdays, your wayward Wednesdays, your tumultuous Thursday, your frightening Fridays, your setback Saturday. When you're dealing with your weekdays, W-E-A-K days, what will get you through? Is that you've got God leading you. 
And I wonder if there's anybody in here that's just grateful that God is still leading you against the reports of what the doctor may have said, against your own sense of victimology, against the path of what others may have predicted to be your status quo in life. You've been able to say God is still leading you and the Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you. I don't care what you're going through. You don't need to look at the clock because chronological time and Kairos time are two different times but when you keep waiting on the Lord won't he come by and see about you well David is telling his son who now is going to be the third king of Israel whatever you do make sure that what you learn Make sure that what you've seen in my life, make sure no matter what you do, that you are mindful of the statutes of God. Now, I don't care what someone is going through today. God didn't bring you this far to leave you. He always makes a way out of no way. He makes a way on the streetway, on the highway, on any other way when there is no way. Because after all, he is your way, Yahweh, my way, your way, and he keeps on making a way. He tells him to stay with God and to exercise righteous judgment. Well, somebody in here needs to know today. That regardless of what others may think of you, God still says that I love you and I'm with you. God still says that I've called you with a purpose. Some of us may have said that we found the Lord, but I'll come to tell you some disturbing news. The Lord never was lost. The Lord found you. The word says, we have not chosen God. God has chosen us. David, mind Solomon. I want you to learn, but not only learn, but I want you to discover what it's like to lead. Because to be a good leader, you have to be a good follower. You have to learn how to be a good follower. And to be a good leader, you have to make some good decisions. So David tells Solomon, always remember God's statutes. Always remember that God is a righteous God. Always remember that God is still leading you and you can live a life that will leave some good things behind with your legacy. Well, my most important point is that he was telling David was telling Solomon that when you are going through your most difficult times, you must remember, you remember the words of Paul when he says, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. The good that I want to do, I don't do. But that which I don't want to do, that's what I do. He says, but I find then the law that says, when I would do good, evil is present with me. Well, my brothers and sisters of First Church, in case you didn't know it, you are here today because you have a special generator that many people don't have. 
I'm talking about when you throw in the towel on yourself. You believe that you can make it any further. When you feel like life has knocked you down. You've been bruised, torn, and broken. I wish I had some help in here today that somebody knows that what brought you this far is not your own ability within yourself. But there was something called a generator. Anybody have a generator in your home? Well, let me tell you what your generator does. At the moment your electricity or your power goes out, your generator immediately comes on to make sure that you are not without power when your electricity goes out. And I've come to tell somebody today that God is your generator. And every time when you give up and when you give out, you've got a generator that when you can't make it any further, your generator comes on and gives you the power until you renew your strength. David makes it clear. That when my mother and father, if by chance, the worst case scenario. If they ever abandon me. I'm still in good hands. And because I have a God. That will pick me up. And I just want to tell somebody today that God is with us. God is on your side. God is still working things out. No matter how bleak and dismal things may be, if you hold on to God's word, you've got to grab a hold of the stirring wheel of faith and grab a hold of the hubcap of endurance. And you've got to make sure that you hold on to the pressed on of faith and you keep on pressing your way because God will be with you and he'll make a way on those days when it seems like he's not there. He'll be right there by your side and whatever you've learned, live. Live out your life and teach somebody and lead somebody so that when you leave here, somebody will know that you were here. I'm going to close with this point. Over my near 32 years of being the pastor of the same congregation, it's often that I come across somebody and they say, well, you know, do you know so-and-so and they used to be a member of your church and they were a member of your church? And sometimes I have to think long and think strong and I still think wrong because I still don't get it right. But then here's the disturbing part. I'm talking about legacy. They say, you know, uh, you remember the one that used to be down there all the time at the AA meeting? The one that was at church when nobody else showed up. The one that came to all of the bread meetings, always was giving somebody a ride. Oh my, I, I, I absolutely know who you're talking about. And on the other hand, Somebody know where I'm going. They say, Pastor, you don't know what I'm talking about. No, no, no. You know the one that kept up all the hell in the church all the time. Walked in late and left early and always came down the center aisle, dressed with those high heel shoes on or the one that had the holy jeans. Oh, 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 oh. I know exactly who you're talking about. Because long after you're gone, if people don't remember your name, they will remember your works and what you stood for. If you didn't 
nothing. People remember the one that did absolutely nothing but stay, came to church every Sunday and did nothing. I know who you're talking about. The one that always prayed, always remained faithful, always gave back to the church, always had something positive to say about God, always loved the children. Your works will follow you. Every person in here, we've got to learn. We've got to lead. And we have to live with our legacy in mind. We're not going to always be here. But God brought you here for a reason. Word says, seeking you shall find, not sitting you shall get. God is on our side. And he has given us the power through a generator called the Holy Spirit in Jesus to be able to move beyond everyone else's limited perception and expectations of what our mighty God can do. First Church, I love you all. And I want to thank you so very much for having your brother and family here today and and i thank god that my brother was able to rest and to get a sabbatical and convince me of taking one next year so i thank god for dr timothy c aarons can you put your hands together again for your beloved pastor and my friend and brother dr timothy c aarons God bless you.